Hey everyone, I'm Tom June and welcome to another UK Space News Update. In today's video we are going to talk about Saxavord, the Viking spaceport, uh, and the latest cadre of European Space Agency astronauts and a funding boost to the UK Space Agency from the government. So stay tuned and let's get started. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Hey everyone, welcome back to another week of newsworthy updates from the UK space industry. And this week we're going to start with Saxavord, which of course is the spaceport being built in Shetland uh, up at Lambaness. Now, the latest update from Saxavort is that work is progressing nicely. So nicely, in fact, that they've actually completed the first of three proposed launch pads up there, named Fredo. That launch pad was actually completed earlier this month, and while there wasn't much fanfare about it at the time, news is starting to trickle out now. Um, work is continuing on the site as a whole, and they're actually starting to uh, construct the buildings that are going to be necessary to carry out rocket launches, including the integration facility where the payloads will be married with their uh, actual launch vehicles. Saks of Ord, uh, are still aiming for a 2023 launch sometime in the spring we're hearing because they are ahead of schedule in every aspect of construction. So they really are making progress up there. Um, they currently have seven clients waiting to launch vehicles, including Astrospace, who are a big partner uh, at Saks of Ord, Skyrora, of course, and the big one, the UK Pathfinder satellite that I mentioned in last week's video, it's going to be launching on an ABL Systems RS-1 rocket. Um, that's if the RS-1 ever actually makes it off the launch pad, because they have been testing it for a couple of years now without a flight. But everything seems to be going well for them, so we can only hope that come spring 2023 we're ready to see at least one rocket take off from launch pad Fredo at Saxavord. Now, as with everything in the UK, it is subject to some red tape, and nothing's actually going to get the go-ahead until, yes, the Civil Aviation Authority complete their public consultation. Now, up in Unst in the Lambaness Peninsula, it is well known for its rich variety of wildlife, particularly uh, avian and marine life. So there is a big public consultation on just now to see what the effects or the side effects of having a spaceport located on the peninsula is going to be. I'm going to drop a link in the description below and I would encourage you all to check out the consultation through the Civil Aviation Authority website. Have your say, get involved and that public consultation ends on the 8th of December so you don't have long. Now, before we move on, I'm going to take just a little second here to say if you do like what you're seeing and you want to get more updates on what's going on in the UK space industry, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and consider ticking that bell for notifications of future videos. Now, we move on to the other big news from this week, which comes from the European Space Agency and courtesy of UK Space Agency astronauts. That's right, because Three astronauts have been chosen as part of ESA's latest astronaut core cadre. The three UK Space Agency candidates are Rosemary Coogan, who has been selected as a career astronaut, making her the UK's third astronaut overall after Helen Sherman and Tim Peake. The next candidate selected was Megan Christian, who was selected to be part of the ESA reserve list. And the next candidate, who has become the most newsworthy of them all. If you've been paying attention to the mainstream media this week, you will have seen his name banded about quite a lot, and for a good reason. And that man is John McFall. He is a former Paralympian. He actually competed and won bronze in the uh, T42 100 meters at the 2008 Beijing Summer Paralympics. Uh, he joins ESA as part of their astronaut training program, and if he successfully completes that training program and does end up in space, then he could potentially become the world's first astronaut with a physical disability. So, when we talk about inclusion and diversity here, uh, <clears throat> ESA really have hit the mark, and it does show that if you have what it takes to be the best of the best, it doesn't matter what your body composition looks like. So 
Massive congratulations to all three of those future astronauts. And the next biggest news comes from the UK government of all sources, because this past week at the European Space Agency's Council of Ministers meeting in Paris, the UK government committed to funding the UK Space Agency and this UK space industry as a whole with an additional £1.8 billion. Pounds. I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. Yep. You heard me right, 1.84 billion pounds. So what does all that money get? Well, several pieces of investment have been written in. The first and probably the most important investment is a contribution to the Rosalind Franklin Mars Rover program, which is set to launch in 2028. Um, up to 200 million pounds has been committed to support the Earth observation sector and 315 million pounds overall when Earth observations are combined with climate study programs. That's about a 45% increase in previous funding, according to the government. Now, additional funding is also going to be made when it comes to space sustainability projects. Again, as I mentioned in previous videos, one of the UK Space Agency and the UK government's key tenets for the UK space programme is sustainability in space. As I already mentioned last week, Astroscale and other companies are involved in this already, so the additional funding will come in handy there. And the other uh, piece of investment that I'm quite interested in is the Vigil Space Weather Observation Programme, which is going to see a satellite launched into deep space in an area known as L5. That's uh, designed to give advanced warning of solar storms. And they will tie directly in with the UK Med Office. So in terms of advanced weather warnings here, that project uh, is really quite interesting, especially when you consider that the UK hasn't sent a satellite into deep space ever. So I think the main takeaway from this is that the UK government and the UK Space Agency combined are really heavily investing in climate programs and sustainability programs. I'm sure there's going to be more on this to follow, but we'll just have to wait and see. So that rounds out this week's news. What are your thoughts on all these various different projects? Are you excited for the first launches in 2023 from Scotland at Saxavord? Let me know in the comments below. And as ever, if you do want to reach out, you can hit me up at one of the social media links. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. It really does help the channel grow. But until next time, I've been Tom June. Thanks for watching.